Hi all, welcome to our Dave Downey fly tying video production. Here I'll be sharing my favourite flies and methods of tying them to make catching fish better for you guys around the world and also making tying these flies easier with my different styles and techniques. All the flies that I tie I personally use and they all catch fish, they're not there to catch the angler. At the end of each of the video will be a wee list of materials required to tie the fly just in case you missed it in the video and also a link to my online shop where you can purchase the flies and the materials to tie these flies. So I hope you all enjoy it and I hope you pass on the word and you get other people to have a wee swatch and you know come and see the channel. Uh, today I'm going to be tying a must have fly for the Lake of Teeth. It really is a pattern that you have to have. Uh, it's one of the most successful, apart from the white cat booby, it's definitely the most successful booby I've ever used uh, and it's a candy floss booby. So without further ado, I'm tying on a short shank special, size 8, so it's actually an international sized but it's a fully mill hook, it's barbed. Obviously you can tie it on barbless as well but I'm tying it on a barbed hook. I'm going to be using some of the booby eyes that I, I sell, uh, they, these ones are 5 mil. sometimes I'll use 7 mil. We're going to be using UTC fluorescent chartreuse thread at 70. I prefer to do my boobies using UTC threads because they sit flatter and they don't they don't always cut through the booby eye uh, when I show you how to do it. We're going to need this for the body, UTC Mirage medium opal. It's a great colour tinsel and it also depending on what colour of thread you're using under the tinsel depends on the, 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 the shade of the tinsel looks if that makes sense we're going to be going back to using some of my spring water blue marabou obviously very proud of my marabou I don't make excuses for the prices I put a huge amount of work into it uh, if people actually came and watched what I'd done then they would realise why you know, I charge that a little bit more the feathers are all usable, there's no junk in the bag and you don't get dye all over your fingers. So we're using spring water blue and we're also using candy coral. Okay, so we've got two different colours here. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is put the booby eye on the hook. So we'll run the thread down a little bit then run it back up and we're going to trim that excess thread off. Now obviously with the booby eye we need to get it ready. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the edges. I'm just going to trim it just a little bit. So I'll try and get it into focus so you can see it on the camera. Right, so there's hardly anything coming off of that, right? We're going to do it on this side as well. I showed guys how to do this over 20 years ago. Uh, they couldn't believe it and how easy it is. So what we then need to do is take the thread, get your varnish ready, because you're going to need your varnish. Because I don't super glue the eyes, I never super glue booby eyes. So we've got our varnish ready, we're going to put the booby eye, it's not really in focus but I'll show you when we bring it up. So, you can see the shape there, slightly. So I'm quite happy with that. So what I'm going to do is just run couple of turns of thread on one side of the, the main bit of thread and then we're going to do two on the other side. So if I bring that into focus you can see the, the booby eyes are on the thread, right? So what we then do is we put a little bit of varnish just above the booby eyes. Now this is the easiest way of doing booby eyes, especially if you're going to competitions and you're not sure what boobies are going to work best, you can have a load of these hooks ready. I actually sell the hooks with the booby eyes on them already attached. Uh, but you can have a load of them ready, then it's just a case of sticking your recipe on it, if you like, you know, your tail, your body, your wing, and it just makes sense. So all you're doing is winding the thread up, and the closer you get to the hook shank, then you see the booby eye just pops up on top. Then all you need to do is do a couple of figure eights, right, just to bind it down a bit. And that's it. That's you got your booby eye. There you go. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Honestly, if you don't do your booby eyes this way, you're crazy. It's the easiest way of doing it. I've been doing it for a long, long time. There's a lot of people hitting the videos. There's a lot of people seeing the videos the way I do it. As I say, I've been doing it for a long time. Uh, I don't super glue it. I want the eyes to move because we don't fish booby. Boob Boobies were banned on a lot of fisheries because we were fishing them on a three foot leader. High, high 
high D line, fast sinking line, master line revolution for the ones that can remember that, chucking it out and basically sitting doing nothing and let, waiting until the fish came along. But by the time the fish came along and swallowed the fly, it was so far down their throat, that's why Booby's got a bad name. You know, on the Lake of Teeth, on Loch Leven, on most places now, you're figure eighting, you're constantly moving the booby, you know, you're stripping it, you're casting it in front of rising fish and pulling it away and getting a reaction. There's different ways of fishing boobies now. So if you're pulling the booby all the time or you're fast figure eating, you want the eyes to kind of move a little bit and then you're you're getting that little wobble in the water so it kind of wobbles away like that. But if they're too solid, what then happens is your dropper wraps around the main line and the booby just spins because there's, there's no way for it to move. So I, I just like the little bit of movement in it. So we'll run the thread back down, take that down to the bend. What we want to do is get a piece of candy coral, cut a piece of that off. That's quite a small piece, stock wise. It's only maybe, that'll be about 10 millimetres. We'll do the same with the white. And then what we do is we put, you can see there, so the white's on one side, candy coral's on the other side. And what then happens is when you fold it in, you've got it all mixed. So it's already pre mixed. You know, I'm not really one for having one on top of the other. I like to mix it. So I've trimmed it away using my, my usual technique of ripping it. And then what I want to do is measure the tail up, then catch and cut. Right, so that's that. Then I'm just going to catch the tail in. One, two, and then just tie it in. Right, so I'm just always using this hand to, to push the material down or get it out of the way or get it to where we want it to be so we can finish the fly off then back down right. so that's how it's got a nice mixture of colours you can see there right. what we're going to do now is we're going to get the Mirage UTC I really love this stuff, the, 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 the colour on it is great catch that in, so this is medium you could use thicker but I tend to find it's harder to work with on a fly this size if you're tying a bigger one then obviously yeah you can you can make it bigger. Then we're going to get our varnish and we're going to pull the tail out of the way and just put a bit of varnish on the thread because the UTC is not getting a rib so it's just flat tinsel but I've never had a problem with a fish ripping the body apart normally they, they rip the eyes apart or you bust the eyes when you're pulling it out of the, you know you're trying to get it out of the fish so here we're just touching turns the whole way up Right, and that gives us a nice shiny body. And you probably can't see it on the camera, but having the yellow thread does make a difference under it. It changes it. If you were to use a black thread, it would be a lot duller. Let's catch that in, and then cut that off. So, and I'm just going to push away any excess varnish that seep, seep through. Now we're going to do the wing next. So we're going through the same process, but instead of 10 millimetres. Be 15 20 millimeters, so you want the wing to be twice as dense as the tail. So we've got our candy floss, we've got our white, got our two bits together on a stock, push it round, catch it, right? Pull it, catch it in your forefinger, and you're in, you're in, you know, the two fingers, and then just rip the, the excess marabou. So you get a nice, you don't want it straight ended. You don't never use scissors on marabou, right? So we want the wing, so it's just sitting at the end of the tail. I always use these fingers to measure it, so that's me. I know where I want it to be now. I can cut it quite happily, and I know that's going to be the right length. I'm not having to readjust it or cut the wing any longer, or you know, make the wing shorter. I'm just going to dampen that a wee bit. So I'm going to pull the eyes forward, right? Pull the eyes forward and set that on there. And just do a loop and catch it in. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's it. Six. Check it. If you're not happy with it, this is the time to pull it apart rather than finishing it and finishing the fly. You don't want to pull the whole wing out. That's it. Uh, you, you'll probably see this bit here. Some people would, oh, you need to cut that away, you need to do this. It doesn't matter. I like it there. Right, it's like a wee tuft. 
So I've went through the, the eye and I'm going to work finish. Right, so I just get the work finish tool. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's that. Double work finish. But honestly, fished on its own, on the point, the buzzers in front of it. I always tend to fish it. I'll fish it on top dropper. Because cat booby is my favourite booby on the lake. But I will fish it on a top dropper. I'll fish a cat booby on a point and I'll fish that dial back. Or I'll fish a cruncher. Or I'll fish some kind of buzzer in the middle. Or sometimes I'll fish a double decker in the middle. Uh, it just depends. But, you know, it is, it's like the two humonguses. The silver on the point and gold on the top dropper. It's like a tag team. They work really well together. You'll not always catch all the fish on this one. You might catch them all on a cat booby. Or it might be the other way about, or it might be even. But I just, for confidence for me personally, I need to have both of them on nine times out of ten. And I will, if I get down to size 14s, you know, obviously they're a wee bit smaller, well, quite a bit smaller. You would use a 3mm booby eye in yellow. Uh, and as a variation, I'll also tie it with a bubblegum pink marabou, so you've got the pink and white. So if this one's not working that well or it's starting to slow down, I will go into the bubblegum pink. And that gives me a double edged sword, so I get I get two two flies for the you know the price of one. So I really hope you enjoyed it. Hope you are going to follow me on Facebook to get the latest updates, uh, get updates on any courses I'm doing. You know I run trips abroad. I've got a few trips to check the public this year. Obviously not lock fishing, but river fishing. Uh, so follow me on the Facebook. That's David C Downey. You can follow me on Instagram, David Downey Fly Fishing. Uh, you can check out my guiding site www.davedownyfishing.com or go to my shop which is www.fly-fishingworld.com where you can get the materials, you can get the flies, you can get both if you want. Some people like to buy the materials and buy a fly or two so they can sit and copy them. Uh, so really hope you enjoyed watching it. If you fish the lake with teeth at all you need to have this fly in your box full stop. You know there's no if you go to the Lake Mateus without a cat candy booby in your, your box, then I don't know. And, you know, as I say, the marabou that I do, it changes colour in the water. Keep it a secret. Well, don't keep it a secret. Tell people. Use it. Tell me what you think of it. Send me a message. Send me questions. You know, I'm here to help. So, thanks for watching. Another Dave Downey Fly Time video production. And I hope you have a good day. And I hope you really get into the fly time. Get your finger out. Get your boxes stocked. This is one you should have stocked in a box and I hope you enjoy some great fishing in 2020. Cheers. Cheers for now, Dave. Over and out.